right, guys. Uh, thank you so much again for joining me on another esports lecture. Um, my name is Nick DeRazio. I'm the director of corporate strategy for Invent Global, and I'm very excited about this topic today. Um, whether you were watching live or just seeing a YouTube video or something like that, um, I think you're in for a treat. The history of esports is often uh, uh, talked about, but I think the actual nitty uh, the details as to how esports exploded in South Korea is uh, fascinating. Uh, it involves uh, drama, it, it involves intrigue, it involves a huge um, financial crisis, and it also involves an act uh, of generosity. So um, without further ado, let's get started. So we know that South Korea is the birthplace of esports, but how did that happen? Um, you often hear people um, attest to a uh, Korean dominance and they say uh, throwaway phrases like, oh, well, it's just Korea or, you know, uh, Koreans are just very good at video games. But it's actually not quite uh, that simple. It was a little bit of luck. It was a little bit uh, of culture and it was kind of planned. Now, I say kind of planned because as you will learn, um, I don't think anyone could have quite planned what happened. But uh, I think it really shows the testament of a Korean culture and how even though in the midst of something horrible, they managed to make it great. So first, let's start with the Internet, right? The Internet is the very uh, the fundamental of why we can trace um, how eSports was born in Korea. Uh, in 1995, the South Korean government enacted the Framework Act on Information. So what this is, it was essentially the very first start what, of a plan to make Korean internet um, infrastructure really, really good, right? They wanted to make it fast, they wanted to make it um, widespread, and they actually wanted um, um, Korean citizens to be literate. They wanted um, Korean citizens to uh, know not only how to use the internet, but know how to get the most of it. Um, this was a very forward-thinking um, decision. Back in 1995, there were very few um, countries that were uh, this invested in internet uh, infrastructure. Uh, for um, comparison, uh, the uh, U.S. from 1998 to 2002, they only invested uh, $2 billion in the internet in this country, and that was only in the form of tax breaks. Whereas if you look at the Korean government, they invested $11, $11 billion in internet um, infrastructure. They had a goal by 2005, and that goal, they wanted 80% of Korean households to have at least um, 20 megabits per second of internet. Now the thing is, that goal um, wasn't reached. You know, It came to 2005, and the internet speed weren't nearly that good. So the Korean government, they doubled down, and by 2009, they managed to get speeds up to 100, um, um, a mega per, 100 a megabits per second per household. Now, if you um, compare that to the average um, internet speeds in Western countries, it just blows them out of the water. However, it takes more than just fast internet to change a culture, right? If you just all of a sudden give everyone, oh, here, you now have fiber optic, it still w wouldn't matter in some areas of the country. So people needed to adopt the usage of the internet. And I'll talk about it um, later on. The Korean government had a plan for that. However, it took a, a disaster to change culture so rapidly. And that disaster was the Asian um, financial crisis of 1997. Now, this was a very, very um, dark time for a lot of Asian um, countries. Uh, uh, South Korea, uh, Thailand, the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia, all of them were hit very, very hard. But um, South Korea was hit in a very a particular way that made a lot of their young talent uh, jobless. The chemical and heavy industry that uh, South Korea um, relied on to employ a lot of um, graduate students or postgraduate students were just gone. So again, we look towards what the uh, Korean government was doing then. They were investing in IT. So people started to look to 
towards IT jobs as the way forward. People started to look towards their fast internet as a way that maybe we can come out of this recession, we can come out of this huge um, financial uh, crisis. So meanwhile, the Korean government continued its internet um, infrastructure plan. Now, this often goes untalked about when talking about why uh, Koreans seem to be so dominant at esports. Well, it all starts with education. The Korean government uh, started the 10 million people of internet um, education program, which is a very literal name, and their goal was to increase computer um, literacy for 10 million um, Korean citizens. Now, this part is very important. This was computer literacy through the disabled, through housewives, and those um, in military service. Now, it was um, particularly focused on those who would otherwise not be uh, interested in the internet, which again, uh, back then was a budding technology. It wasn't as uh, widespread as it is now. So if you look at um, other countries, you know, we'll use the um, US as an example, uh, there wasn't um, anywhere close to this widespread um, education. Obviously, it was a lot easier for Korea because it's um, so small, but this was something that was a huge bit of importance for them. So 10 million um, Korean citizens were all of a sudden going through um, government um, literacy uh, programs. They were using, they were learning that you could chat on the internet. Um, a grandmothers and grandpas were learning that they could chat with their sons and daughters through the internet. It was a huge a very ambitious uh, project, but it turns out it's something that really, really helped um, Korean esports and many other um, industries there. So you have um, to ask yourself, what happens when all of a sudden millions of people are educated about the power and utility of the internet? Well, they demand faster speeds and more unreliable services. As if it wasn't enough that the Korean government was already focusing on the internet. Now that you've taught this society to crave the internet, they wanted it better. So Korean internet providers went through tons of competition. Everyone knew that there was this new hungry audience of people who demanded fast internet. So that means that the costs were lowered and the quality um, was increased. And this was all due to competition, right? Everyone wanted to capture this. So you have multiple uh, levels as to why Korean internet and internet culture was leagues ahead of any other countries and it all started with this financial crisis. So just a quick recap because things are going to get really really dicey. Right now we have it's 1997. The South Korean economy is in ruin. You have this entire uh, generation of young skilled workers who are out of work. Now the internet is now more more popular faster and more accessible than ever before. If you try to think through all of that cocktail of things, what's going to happen? What are the um, effects and how is this going to affect um, um, the society? Now, obviously, there's the spoiler alert. We all know this is a discussion a, about esports. Um, but these young and unemployed, they become power um, internet users. They had a lot of free time. They had a lot of time to just uh, sit around using the internet. And this is when instant um, chat messaging in South Korea exploded in popularity. Um, there's actually a funny little uh, bit of trivia here. Um, it's considered very rude, or at least it was back then, it was considered rude to not um, respond to someone's instant message with a speed and quickness in South Korea, which is the complete opposite of culture um, in the West. But you can start to see why these type of cultural um, differences begin. If you would assume that um, the rest of your peers are power um, internet users, the concept of just not logging on or not being online was scarce there. There's also all sorts of other things that grew in popularity. Uh, stock trading in South Korea became a very empowered industry due to their fast internet and accessibility. Um, uh, South Korean uh, stock traders were able to see the um, results of their trade in real time and for very cheap. This phrase is one of the first phrases that I learned when I first visited uh, South Korea. Uh, bali bali, it means hurry, hurry, you know, hurry up. I probably said it wrong. But it really became a symbolic um, phrase or word for how um, Korean culture uh, started to change. Their internet was faster. Their young people became internet power users. So, you know, um, internet 
a culture is fast and as a result um, Korean culture um, became fast too in um, a national uh, polls I believe it was 43 percent of Koreans and this was back in 2008 43 percent of Koreans um, considered themselves uh, new adopters of technology which is just a huge percentage of people compared to um, other countries um, especially when you consider that the Asian cultural um, uh, I guess values at the time were not one that was rooted in speed and quickness in fact in China um, in Japan it was about being stoic and calm um, in the face of a hurricane of, of work and adversity but Korean culture started to um, differentiate, um, um, differentiate itself. So um, South Koreans, they wanted fast internet. They wanted fast changes, and they truly looked towards the internet and technology to, cha to uh, save them from this financial crash. So enter the PC bang, right? Or the PC bong, if you want to say it within you know, the accent. Uh, this right here is just a screenshot of the um, original uh, Starcraft, you got a little, uh, seems to be some sort of boba tea there. This is the um, definitive moment in which uh, South Korean uh, gaming culture became one that the world would soon begin to uh, uh, recognize. So these um, PC bongs, they became an oasis for the young, jobless, and the disheartened. Uh, it's really actually fascinating how these PC bongs were first introduced. So this 1997 um, on financial crash what it hit hardest the most were these major um, electrical companies or um, companies that had tons of software or tons of uh, PCs right so really think about it try to get that picture in your head all of these young um, entrepreneurs I'm um, college educated they had all of these computers from their failed businesses or from all of these layoffs you have a company that used to hire you know 300 they lay off 200 of them. So there's 200 um, computers just sitting around. So these entrepreneurs saw this and said, okay, let's create this business model that's based around all of these computers we have. And this was an extremely popular business model because, I mean, really think about it. Korea had the fastest internet thanks to the competition from the uh, demand for internet due to this literacy boom spurred on by the government. So the internet was cheap. You could get it very fast and you only had to pay for one internet connection for all of these PCs and the demand was so high due to the joblessness the mass mass unemployment so you know people couldn't afford their own home PCs or if they did they would sell their PCs to these PC bonks to try to make some extra money so we have this huge huge demand that's made even more due to the computer um, literacy now a lot of um, Westerners think um, a PC bong and they immediately think of gaming but actually that wasn't always the case um, uh, a PC bongs are places to check email um, chat online and overall be an internet um, power user now those who are familiar with any sort of LAN environment knows that things start to get pretty intense when it comes to competition when you're all playing in the same uh, um, lagless environment but things were different in Korea because the people playing games they were young they were educated and they had tons of time on their hands right being good at video games it became a surefire way to gain respect um, among your peers and colleagues um, unlike the West where there was tons of negative um, connotations with video games you know um, the arcade scene was pretty much the most mainstream but even then, the competitive titles were few and far, and far between. Um, now that is not to say that um, South Korea had its own issues and negative connotations with gamers, right? Um, in South Korea, problems of internet addiction, um, um, internet anxiety, um, ladder anxiety, like these, these became very, very real. And you can start to see why, right? This financial crisis left a hole in a lot of young people's sense of self and self and sense of worth and that hold was filled through competitive gaming now some people you know they took it in the best possible way and they said I'm gonna game to my very hardest and have all this mastery exude this confidence but you know like other people um, took it very very uh, personally when they lost and that kind of became the negative stereotypes so this number just it blows my mind so 
in uh, uh, 1997, we see only 100 uh, PC bangs in, in Korea. That should be Korea. Nice typo. Yes. Now, by 1998, after this financial crisis, there were 3,000. So again, that's like a huge amount of increase. And in 2001, 23,548 PC bangs in Korea. So it was an absolute explosion in culture. And now you start seeing PC bongs everywhere. Now, in the West, um, arcades were there too. I almost view it as the same idea, but a different execution. Um, you really can compare the two um, cultures because they had to do with the same thing. It was a place where young, often uh, um, uh, uh, disenfranchised youth, a youth would come and really show off their talent, right? This is where you had the Street Fighter scene in the West, the like Mortal Kombat scene and things like that. But whereas the U.S., again, we didn't have that same sense of PC um, literacy. We didn't have that same sense of need for fast internet. So for us, you know, arcade culture uh, blossomed. So if there's anything you can take from this lecture, you, you can finally have a reason to explain why um, South Koreans um, historically have been better at PC and competitive video games. It's because they've simply been taking it more seriously than we have or more seriously than the rest of the world. So here's a, another big question that people ask a lot, right? Why was StarCraft the breakout um, Korean esports title? And I think the answer is just fabulous. It was actually an act of empathy and a generosity. You see, a StarCraft was first published in Korea by a company called LG um, Electronics. This company, just like many, many others, were forced to downsize due to the financial crisis. So a managing a staff member at LG Soft, he made a, uh, a bold decision. He started his own a startup with, again, the intent to uh, publish and uh, to uh, publish video games, but he called it um, Henbitsoft. And the first thing that Henbitsoft, it could be pronounced Hanbitsoft, so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. The first thing he did was he gave copies of StarCraft for free to the emerging uh, PC Bong uh, community. Um, you know, these people who ran these PC Bongs, they were just like him. They were people laid off, they were people furloughed. So rather than charge for um, the license to play StarCraft or even charge for the copies of StarCraft, which by the way, um, back then you needed an individual CD and CD key for each PC. And if we go back to that number, you see how many PC bongs were there. It was a real act of a generosity. Um, this by default made StarCraft the game that every single um, PC bong um, in Korea had. Now you can argue um, whether or not it was an act of of a generosity or whether it was just an extremely smart um, decision but I don't think that anyone could have predicted just how um, competitive and just how entertaining um, these StarCraft matches um, would become. Uh, StarCraft was also and again this goes to when I said was it a little bit of luck? Yes because you know there could have been any game that these PC bongs could have gone for free but it just so happened to be StarCraft one of the best made, best balanced uh, competitive titles of all time, especially back in in um, the 90s. So there's many other uh, factors as to why um, South Korea was the birthplace of esports, right? Um, I mentioned this before, but in 2004, a, a national survey showed that 43% of Koreans consider themselves early adopters of technology, right? Uh, this also combined with the embracing of edutainment, right? When someone, this is the um, combination of education and entertainment. Um, Koreans have always embraced this at much higher rates than other countries. Uh, this led to the happy marriage of um, high uh, of high academics and esports. You know, you had your best and brightest um, um, playing these games at a competitive level, hanging out at these PC bongs and. You know, this idea of being a pro gamer as something that is positive, that started in Korea. You know, these ideas of um, intelligence, um, aptitude, um, keeping calm, uh, keeping uh, a discipline. These are not only highly um, desired traits 
within an esports competitor, but it's also a highly um, desired trait in Korean um, academic uh, culture. So, in summation, right, there was tons of reasons as to why esports is massive in Korea, but it really, really started with these four things. The Korean government invested early in internet speeds and computer literacy. This created a generation of internet um, power users. And again, not only were they internet um, power users, but they were mothers, they were grandfathers, they were people who you wouldn't normally um, associate with using the internet in uh, um, the 90s. This financial crisis that hit South Korea, it forced them to embrace internet and it left a lot of discouraged uh, young people with a lot of time on their hands. They flocked to um, a PC uh, a PC bongs and competitive gaming was born. It was flourished. And again, that one act of generosity made StarCraft, which was also one of the greatest design esports of all time, you know, a shout outs to a Blizzard for that one. It made it the most popular and accessible game in South Korea. The best and brightest in South Korea were, were drawn to PC gaming and their achievements were um, respected and admired. Um, if you really think about it, this was the birth of the very first esports um, e consumer. You know, the heart of an esports consumer is someone that is watching the game being played at the highest level and respecting what they're seeing because they understand it. And if you take all of these factors into, um, into consideration, uh, South Korea was the first group of people to um, respect in widespread mass cultural uh, fashion a uh, respect competitive uh, gaming. So that was my brief uh, history of the East, of, of the history of esports in South Korea. Um, uh, you can um, reach me on Twitter at Nick Dorazio 3 rd you can follow me on Instagram or you can just check out all of our content at inventglobal.com. Um, I try to put on these brief little um, uh, lectures every Tuesday about something interesting within the world of esports. And you can also check out our Invent Global Esports conferences on Friday. So every Friday we have a panel and it's very cool. Also, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, um, HyperX. Uh, thanks for this great mic and, also of, and all of the other um, hardware you've given the um, Invent Global team. It really makes these type of things possible. So. Um, thank you so much for uh, uh, listening to this brief history. My name ha is Nick Dorazio. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, thanks again for listening. I will catch you next time. Uh, later. Bye-bye.